Good day and welcome to the glorious suburbs of South Leicestershire on what is a fantastically cold and damp day. As is the norm for this time of year, seeing as it is near the second half of January. You all know the deal about this time of year. Cold air temperature, cold road temperature. The roads are wet all day long if it's been moist at any point during the last couple of days. The amount of muck and just horrible stuff stuff that appears on the road is not particularly desirable which puts many 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 motorcycles who don't use motorcycles as commuter tools or necessary forms of transport into a position where they just don't bother getting out and especially on days like today that's very much understandable as most seasonal riders ride aboard sportier bikes or higher bikes or more agile pointy bikes in general really those bikes being so high up and so able to go around corners at heavy lean angles can just feel quite naff leaning into the corners and yeah as a rider and owner of a a Duono, which is definitely on the more sporty side of the motorcycling range i felt around quite a few conditions and uh, what's good for him and what's not very good however riding multiple bikes recently that are quite low to the ground got me contemplating how good that sort of bike is for this time of year therefore here we are today on a triumph bonneville bobber na 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 1.2 litres of torquey thrust but more importantly for my argument very little ground clearance foot pegs are out in front a seat height of ding which means i can just get on the seat by walking up the back of the bike and all of the motorcycle's weight with its tiddly ten litre fuel tank is also low to the ground as am i in my eyes for this sort of single digit temperature wet and horrible greasy day in the middle of january pretty close to the ideal bike anywho enough jibber jabber time to enjoy the ride for today Woohoo! go on go on go on yes about the bike itself big 1200 certainly not a lot of power as expected from a cruise sort of thing but certainly huge amounts of torque as i shall now demonstrate <laughs> oh dear, 70 miles an hour has never felt so quick when I'm so low. It's certainly worth mentioning that I've never uh, <coughs> ridden a power cruiser before. I've ridden this sort of bike before with much smaller capacities, which, well, as explained earlier, is part of the reason why I tried to get there on this day. But this is certainly my first go on a proper big bore cruiser type. I know it's not a Harley or anything out and out cruiser esque with V twin or such like, but it certainly ain't far out from what they are. Oh, oh it's always got. I wind to it like a supercharger. There we go. Come on. <laughs> Touch it down with toe cider anyway. <laughs> Probably best put a uh, public service announcement out now before it's uh, too late, but certainly not converting to the cruiser scene. Just making a small point about this sort of bike for this sort of time of year. No way am I going to uh, chop in the toy no anytime soon for this. As soon as those warmer days and drier roads come. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Certainly feels better to be back on something more pointy, shall we say. Not only is this bike popping my big bore cruiser cherry, but as well, a few other things new to me. I've got modes and traction control. Hold it. Never had them before. And to be honest, they don't really make much difference. <laughs> well, traction control does you if you try and hammer it in first any sort of conditions, the light will come on. But the modes, I mean, they don't really do anything. <laughs> if they were for actual traction control, actual power limitation, they would probably be quite good, but just where they change throttle response, I mean, if the traction is there to help you out when you're being in a knobhead, then why do you need to uh, change how the throttle works in different conditions? Don't get me wrong, I am totally not one of them techno folks who are like, oh no, don't need ABS, don't need traction, don't need modes, don't need this, that and the other, but if you're going to put it on there, make it purposeful. And because I don't normally have ABS and traction control, it's normally a good excuse to be able to uh, do this. Beautiful. Just want to figure out where I am. Let's have a quick look. Ooh, with the key down here. Authentic. <laughs> I don't know how much tight temp we got. None. Yeah, with them exhaust that low. And then foot controls down there and frame and radiator <laughs> yeah there ain't gonna be much ground clearance and turning which this time of year fantastic yeah we'll leave traction on 
So I'm not too enamoured with the fact that they still have a full tank of fuel and have used what looks to be at least half of it, if not more, in 27 miles. <laughs> Go cruising! And where it is a modern motorcycle with everything, heated grips are oh, on all of it, all of the hot. And here comes the rain. Oh, it's gone really sticky rain, you can't see. Tunnel! <laughs> Woo! Oh dear. This is not a faster bike than the Tuono, but in these sort of conditions, you can just, you can use what's there a bit better, with more confidence, and all in all, have an experience! Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> oh, it's not raining, but whatever that misty stuff is, it's sticking like a bugger. Oh, short suspension travel. Not good! This is definitely more bumpy than it should be. Oh. <laughs> it's certainly worth mentioning. Part of the reason that put me onto this idea to begin with, to try it out. Kenny Roberts, senior, of course. One of the greatest motorcycle racers of all time. Definitely top three. As a retired racer. Come on all the way, let's go! As a retired racer, <laughs> he doesn't spend time climbing through the canyons on an R1 or any form of Grand Prix replica bike that he would have had in his day. No, he goes about on a cruiser. But what does he do on that cruiser? Does he just put his piss pot hat on in the summer and tootle about the roads? No, he keeps up his sports bike riders, <laughs> which obviously for him is uh, not too difficult compared to most people out there. Don't get me wrong, I'm not comparing myself with the ability of Kenny Roberts in any shape or form. But I totally get why he does it. The thing is, lots of top-end racers don't even use the roads. They see him as oh so dangerous in comparison to their racetracks. Due to all the other people, the potential of all crap on the road, all them sorts of things. But then it seems, and not just King K, certainly a few others, use absolutely non-sporting bikes on the road. And seeing as most road riders see winter... Hey! <laughs> Seeing as most road riders see winter as the awful time of year when there's no point to ride because it's just horrible to go around, using a compromised bike like this makes it brilliant. All in all, it's a pretty good way to be able to enjoy a cold winter's day in the rain and the horrible stuff, so yeah, fantastic. And it's now time to go out and buy one. <laughs> And probably not size. If it did, it wouldn't be a big power cruiser like this. It'd be something I could think about with. Maybe I could supercharge one. <laughs> Deary me. I'll be quiet before I start suggesting any other worse ideas. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, au revoir.